Today I want to take a look at using the basic panel in Adobe Lightroom and what order that we want to use the sliders in. Now if you haven't watched my previous videos, I've made a video on almost every slider in the basic panel and I'm not going to be going into what each slider does in this video because I've already covered that. So if you haven't already, definitely watch those videos first. Today I want to take a look at given all of those sliders, this is the order that I use them in when I'm actually editing a photograph. So for me, the first slider is always the exposure slider. And again, exposure is just your overall brightness and darkness in the photo. And in this case, I think we can bring it up a little bit. I think overall the photo was a little bit too dark. Now, these photos, by the way, uh, shot in Legoland, California, went there for the first time in my life uh, a couple months ago. It was a huge lifelong dream of mine to go there. Amazing place. If you haven't gone there and you like Legos, go. It's super cool. Um, anyway, exposure slider, we go ahead and drag that. From exposure, I'm going to jump down to blacks, which seems counterintuitive, but I found that this order works the best for me. So I'm going to jump down to blacks. Now again, blacks, we're setting how dark we want the darkest thing to be. And what I'll usually do with most of these sliders is drag them all the way to the left and all the way to the right to see what we're working with. And I definitely think the blacks could come down a little bit on this photograph. I'm going to bring them down to maybe minus 40. And that's going to give us a little bit more contrast. It's going to darken down the blacks, which in turn is going to add contrast to the photograph. Now, whites is next for me. Whites is number three. And with whites, we're doing the exact opposite of blacks. We're setting how bright do we want the brightest thing to be. And in this case, I'm going to look at the White House here. And I don't want to clip those whites. So I'm going to use this histogram in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And I'm going to play with whites. I'm going to watch that right-hand side. You can see I can blow out as much as I want. But I think right about plus 15, 16, that histogram is just about to touch the right-hand side, but not quite. We call that clipping. It's almost about to clip, but not quite there. So I'm going to bring the whites up a little bit. Now, here's the thing. At this point, I think there's too much dark stuff and too much bright stuff in this image. But that's OK, because whites and blacks are a starting point for me. And that's why I do them second and third in the order. Because from here, I go to highlights and shadows, and I fine tune what I did with whites and blacks. So I'm going to take shadows, and again, I'm going to drag it both ways. And to me here, I actually want to add a little bit more information into the shadows. So I'm actually going to brighten them up just a little bit, like 10 points maybe. And with highlights, I'm going to play with those. And I want to restore a little detail to the highlights. So I'm going to bring the highlights down just a bit and bring some detail back into the White House. All right? So we're getting closer. Now next for me is contrast. And again, we talked about this when we talked about the contrast slider. The contrast slider is a little bit misleading. It's not actually contrast. Contrast in the normal sense is the difference between the brightest thing and the darkest thing. This contrast slider is mid-tone contrast, which in this case I think we could definitely use some in this photo to help crisp in and make the kind of the helicopter there in the front a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to give us a little bit of contrast, bring that up a little bit. Now, those are my first six sliders. From here, I'm going to move down to clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Clarity, I'm going to play with a little bit. I really like clarity, but never to plus or minus 100. Like, things just look awful when you do that. But a little bit of positive clarity, like maybe plus 20, gives it a nice little pop. I like that. All right? Vibrance and saturation, I'm going to, I've talked about those. I'm going to skip saturation. I'm just going to give it a little bit of vibrance to bring out the colors in the photo a little bit more. I really like the yellows on the tips of the rotor blades because there's not much yellow in the shot, and I want that to pop a little bit. And I think vibrance helps with that. So I'm going to give it a little bit of vibrance. And that's mostly it. Now, I should also mention white balance up at the top. If the image has white balance problems, I'll usually actually fix that before anything else in the basic panel. When I initially looked at this, I said, ah, I think the white balance is fine. But I could always come back when I'm done with the basic panel and just fine tune things a little bit. And I think I think I was actually pretty close. Could also play with the drop down box, hit the cloudy button there. Eh, no, that's a little bit too much. Maybe try daylight. No, oh, that's looking pretty close, right? Again, all of these sliders have been explained in more detail in other videos that I've made already. Now, to summarize, very very simple. For me, I always go with exposure first, then I go to blacks and whites, then I go to highlights and shadows, then I go to contrast, then clarity, then vibrance and saturation. And that's my normal workflow through the basic panel. Now, from there, there's a lot of other things we can do in Lightroom. But the basic panel, I do that to every single picture, and my workflow stays pretty much exactly the same 
image to image to image. So working on a workflow like that can really help you become a more consistent editor in that all of your photos have a consistent style and a consistent look, and that's only gonna come once you're super comfortable with editing. So if you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, leave it in the comments section below. I love answering questions from people. Also, if you have a request on a video you'd like me to do, something in Lightroom or Photoshop that you've always wondered about, leave that down in the comments section as well. And finally, if you're liking these videos, we're doing one a week or two a week, uh, every single week. If you wanna be kind of kept up to date with what we're doing, hit that subscribe button right down there and get subscribed to our channel.